So when you call and you go, I think we had a breach. Can you look at it on Friday when we close early? (laughs) (laughs) Don't bother us right now. (laughs) Yeah, sure. We'll have it done in the jiffy. You're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax. HIPAA help is on the way. Welcome to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs, and joining me is Donna Grindle of Carding Appliance. How's it going, Donna? It's going well. Very good. Even though we're recording at night, which we yeah. shouldn't do. Yeah, so for, for the listeners, yeah, we always record in the mornings, uh, except when we're kind of getting behind and... So we record in the evenings when we do that. So this is one of those evening recordings. So imagine yourself having to work a 10-hour straight, just rigorous shift and then coming home and then having to stick a microphone in front of your face (laughs) (laughs) and pull yet another one hour with somebody who you really did not spend time with. (laughs) It's like, let me, oh, I can't wait till the end of the day to torture myself. I know. It's pretty much like most married couples, right? (laughs) It is. I get to go home, torture myself. Oh, anyway, I'm just kidding. Um, Work spouse. Yep. So that's what it is for us. So anyway, we're going to uh, pep it up. I like we have a five-hour energy in front of us and make this happen. So let's talk about where you're going to be at. For those of you who don't know, we do have listeners that are new every week. So some people are like, why do you every single week tell us where you're going to (laughs) be? There's always some new listeners. Yeah, you uh, can tell. We got like nine new ones today. Absolutely. So we do want people to know where they can meet us at because, um, you know, Donna gets around, round, round, I get around, and we like to know <laughs> where she's at. Some people want to know where she's going to be at so they can meet her. Others of us want to know where she's going to be at so they can stay away. Uh, <laughs> but either way, where are you going to be, Donna? <laughs> well, as far away from you as I can stand. <laughs> well, I just can't deal with this much longer, people. <laughs> no, so... In July, July 19th, to be exact, I'll be in the wonderful uh, city, downtown ATL, the big oh. A. Yeah, we don't, we don't say Hotline anymore for those I know, either. the ATL. The ATL. So, although in the 80s, Hotlanta was quite popular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> I was there for that. Uh, but I'll be speaking with the Atlanta Association of Legal Administrators about managing cybersecurity in your legal practice. Hoot, hoot. Nice. That's in July. And then in August, what are we doing, David, in August? Boot camp. Boot camp. <laughs> ma'am, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yep. This will be the uh, second time. we uh, Everybody survived the first one. No casualties. Mm-hmm. So uh, we decided to have another one, see if we can get any casualties out of this one. They did ask for a drink awfully early that first day, though. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I think one of the suggestions was to serve alcohol early. <laughs> <laughs> Mimosas and Bloody Marys. Like, let's just, them. Yeah, just, let's just start out at 8 a.m. <laughs> uh, but we do know that some people were overwhelmed, which uh, we knew they would be. But it's okay, because uh, we delivered it in the fashion that they could take it home and let it sink in over time. But, yeah. um, so uh, do you, let's, I guess let's discuss the boot camp for a second. Uh, mm mm-hmm. We uh, we are going to do some things different this go around, and uh, we we are sprucing up some of the topics a little bit because we definitely found that some of the things that we thought were five minute topics turned out to be fifty minute topics. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're changing some things around and uh, and making it better. Uh, one of the things we're also doing is we're changing the pricing a little bit. You know, we we mentioned to you guys who are uh, have been listening for a while that the pricing probably wouldn't stay the same because it was super low. So we are going to be going up on that. However, what we're doing is we're giving those of you who are diligent in clicking the button, <laughs> we're going to we're going to let those uh, people who buy before August the 1st have it at the price that we originally had the first one. So it'll be Yeah, 40. we had a lot of people that were like I can't make it, I can't make it. So we're trying we're trying to give them an opportunity. Yep. So if you go to the hip the I'm oh, not the hip podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the hip uh, You can see all the details there with the pricing, and the pricing will go up August the 1st. So get in there now and get your tickets. It'll be worth it. But we are the HIPAA Podcast. Yep. So, yeah, we can find us at the HIPAA Podcast.com. But the bootcamp is the HIPAA Podcast and the HIPAA Bootcamp. <laughs> Make sure it's we are the. the 
The ones. Is it the yeah. or the? Uh, never mind. Uh, so. <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> Sorry. Nighttime. So, yep. So in September, I will be speaking at the Unconvention in Washington, D.C., September 16th and 17th, if you're an IT person. Uh, we'll be talking about compliance. I'm also going to do a segment uh, not on compliance. Going to do one on uh, some video marketing. Since, uh, yeah, since I do a lot of video stuff. Yeah, we're going to try to do more video stuff coming here soon. Mm-hmm. So, then that uh, gets us to October, where I'm with uh, in Kennesaw, North Metro MGMA, October 17th. And then November the 10th. Now I've lost my mind on the Georgia Association of Orthopedic Executives Conference at Callaway Gardens. Nice. So come see us if you're in the area. And uh, I enjoyed when I was uh, traveling through New York and Atlanta. I wore my stay out of my breeches shirt and enjoyed the weird looks you get. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I forgot to share that with you last week. It was fun, dude. Yeah, I'm sure. So, <laughs> so nobody asked you what it meant? No, well, I was with, you know, a big crowd, so it wasn't like I was with myself. So oh, okay. With myself, so it was yeah. a little different then. Right. Okay, so we're going to dive into today talking about some more breaches. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so we're, we're going to cover some of the reporting costs because there's been some new um, information out on it. what exactly does a breach cost you? And, and how are you going to apply that to some of the decisions that you make? So mm-hmm. um, so our topic for today, we're going to talk about uh, the fact that this month, the New York State Attorney General announced, did I say steak? Yeah, you did. <laughs> Again, it's nighttime. <laughs> the New York State Attorney General announced a settlement with Copilot, a healthcare services company that uh, illegally deferred notice of breach for more than 220,000 patient records. <laughs> Uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. And um, we also get the latest numbers on the cost of the data breach in the 2017 report of the Poneman Institute. Uh, and IBM put that out. And then we're also going to discuss uh, the two of them and how they can help us to uh, make better decisions in our practice about, uh, you know, whether or not we're going to actually say that we had a breach or just cover it up. No, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what we're gonna talk about, David. Whether to cover it up or not. Oh, Jesus P. <laughs> so let's go into the Copilot case. Uh-huh. Yeah. So Copilot is it's a company that does that physicians could log into to see if certain medications were covered by insurance plans. And so there are a business associate uh, in some manner, and I, I don't know how it's really connected, but we know there are a business associate because that's been stated. So that means they fall under HIPAA as well as whatever the state laws are, and they are in New York State. So here's the thing, though. On October 26, 2015, an unauthorized individual gained access to confidential patient reimbursement data that Copilot had on their website. Mm-hmm. And for you and I, we uh, know what this means because it says that they used PHP My Admin. <laughs> yeah, and that is you know we did a, an episode a while back on website security and things that you need to worry about in securing your website, your company website, and having a a hack of your PHP My Admin is. I mean, that goes way deep into where you should be secure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't know about you, uh, but that, I was, I, I was flabbergasted by that because it's clear that either the people that were doing the website didn't understand security, which we talk about that in our website security, because a lot of times, People build websites and they don't understand at all how to secure them. Mm-hmm. But you would hope that a company that's business is based on a website would put a little extra oomph in figuring that out. Yep. But it didn't yeah. happen. No, clearly, it did not. <laughs> because they were able to get in there. And when you have that level of access, you have access to the database, not just the pages and the posts that you see, you know, WordPress and that kind of stuff. You have the database. Mm -hmm. And they downloaded the records, 221,178 patients. Bam. 
and got their name, gender, date of birth, address, phone number, and medical insurance card. Pretty much all you need to become them. Mm -hmm. So that happened in October 2015. So then in February, middle of February 2016. Okay. So let's see. Um, November, December, January, February. So, okay. Almost four months. Yeah, so that's beyond 60 days right there. (laughs) I'm just going to go with that. Uh, But uh, the FBI opened an investigation at Copilot's request, focusing on, now here's where the kicker is, focusing on a former employee who they believe was the intruder, which also says to me they didn't pay attention to security because Mm -hmm. when somebody leaves, you're supposed to... Change their passwords. And when technical people leave, you got to change a lot of passwords. <laughs> yeah. Ain't that the truth? But that's, yeah. a, that's a common problem even in the small practices. You know, I've, I have clients sometimes and you'll go in and you're like, hey, what happened to someone? Oh, she left here a couple months ago. I'm like, uh, really? <laughs> 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 Might want to let me know that. <laughs> 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 well, when we talked about that, when we did that episode on, on managing third-party passwords and how many different passwords are out there that you don't even know exist, and you were talking about that, you know, your first call should be to me. Mm-hmm. And this is why. This is why. So we uh, need more people to truly understand how many usernames and passwords really exist on your network that you could get into trouble with. So that was bad enough. Let me just say, that Mm -hmm. was bad enough. And then. (laughs) And then. (laughs) It gets crazy. (laughs) Well, they didn't notify anybody until January 2017, a year later, (laughs) after... The FBI started an investigation, and well after they found it, and they said, well, the FBI was investigating, so we didn't have to tell anybody. (laughs) No, that's not how it works. (laughs) So let's make this clear to everybody. Yes, you should get law enforcement involved. And yes, the FBI wants to participate in hacking incidents so that they can pursue them because sometimes they go across state and international borders. However, just because they're investigating doesn't mean you don't have to notify. It says in the law that if they tell you not to notify because it could hamper the investigation, then you don't until they tell you it's okay. But the FBI is like, we didn't tell them not to. (laughs) We don't know what you're talking about. What's up with that? So, you know, from October 2016, or 2015 to January 2017, way, I'm pretty sure, more than 60 days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me think. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. More than 60 days. Way more than 60 days. So the New York State Attorney General has nailed them with the New York State laws and not the necessarily the HIPAA laws. Mm-hmm. So that means you got to assume OCR is in there messing around somewhere. Yep. Uh, so, so far, they paid New York State $130,000 for this little faux pas. Ooh, nice. But I wouldn't be surprised if uh, OCR didn't drop the hammer on them because, you know, they've already done that failure to notify resolution this year. Mm-hmm. So, to see, and this one is a business associate. Yeah, and that's another thing people don't think about is, the fact that these states are now getting involved with the, some of these fines because most states now have laws around privacy and security of information, not just patient information, but mm-hmm. you know, identifiable personal information is now protected in most states. And I, ironically, we did an episode on understanding state requirements. <laughs> wow. I guess because we're, what is this, 111 episodes, so... Yeah, we've done a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> we just keep churning them out. Yeah. But it's clearly that is, if I were the covered entity, I would be a little upset. Yeah. I'd be a lot upset that they held on to it for that long. And it also, if they truly believe that was it, they clearly didn't understand the law, which is another point for vetting these people. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got to let me know. You've got to understand the law. 
Well, there and, should have been there should have been something in their business associate agreement, assuming they had one, mm-hmm. that goes over that. It covers, you know, when would you notify us when something happens? I don't know. Recently, I did an assessment. It had a business associate agreement. It had six line items in it. That's it, six. <laughs> one, two sentences. It was. It fit on less than, it was like a half a page business associate agreement. So I don't know. It's the first time I ever seen, seen anything like that. So now I'm like, I got to go back and cross-reference that or something. But... Okay. Um, yeah, you don't know. You don't know. I mean, I would assume you at least take the example that HHS puts out and <laughs> kind of modify it. You know. Yeah, but I did, this business associate, I don't know. I mean, they have stated clearly this is a HIPAA business associate, or they may be treating them like a clearinghouse and say they're a covered entity. I don't know the HIPAA implications because I don't know how the business is structured. So either they're a clearinghouse that is a separate covered entity, so then they're a mess, or because the physicians use it to look up medications for insurance coverage, you've got to assume it's dealing with not the physicians as much as the insurance companies. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're business associate of the insurance companies. So I I hope we'll find more details uh, from what OCR might be doing with it. But clearly... It is not meeting the acceptable requirement for notifying your patients when something goes wrong. Okay. And the popo's here, so we don't. Y'all sit down. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we'll get. We'll tell somebody when it. You know when it's better. When it. You know. Yeah. And we still don't know if it was the ex-employee. So there's a lot of juicy stuff up in there. Give us time to save up. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So that information we got. Uh, recently, that just came out in June, and then within like five days, we get the new data breach, cost of a data breach report. The night this came out, I was reviewing a presentation I was doing the next morning, and I'm like, "Oh look, all my numbers are now different." <laughs> They're gonna start all over. <laughs> no, I, ju- I just mentioned it. I wasn't gonna redo all my slides and stuff. So, but anyway, so uh, yeah, so costs are going up. Well, actually, the cost went down on the average, mm-hmm. but for healthcare, cost went up. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, average cost per record in 2016 was 355. In healthcare, yes. 355. 2017, a whopping raise, 380 dollars. It now is <laughs> per record. So those are per record numbers, and that's running with a four-year average of 369 dollars. Now, that's the cost, like, that includes notification and everything? Is, is yeah, that all-inclusive? Yeah, they're looking at what, how, they're trying to add in costs for loss of business, losing customers, compliance failures, you know, recovery, business continuity, the whole nine yards. They're trying to lump everything in there and see what they can come up with, what it really costs. Wow. So, when you look at the big numbers and... You know, you look at, okay, well, we've got 100,000 patients. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a lot. Cha-ching. Yeah, you know, know, even you, if it's 1,000 patients, that's $380,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so millions when you get up into, you know, I've got 10,000 patients. I've got, you know, so it, it can be very, very expensive. And that says that's the average. Mm-hmm. And we know what averages are. In this case, you want to be... Below average, not <laughs> excelling. <laughs> <laughs> but another thing to, to bring to light, and we talk about this a lot when we talk about the fines, is that you know if you look at three hundred eighty dollars and you multiply it by you know a bunch of patients, um, some people are going to say, yeah, but I don't see fines that high. So how are how are the numbers three hundred eighty dollars record? And the reason is because all the cost around the breach, not the fine that you see published all the time. It's everything else. It's the cap. It's the notifications. It's the lawyers. It's the business damage. It's all those things Mm -hmm. rolled into one. That's when it starts getting expensive. It's not the nice big numbers that you see published. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's the least of your worries. (laughs) You know, if you had a breach and you had, well, you know, the one we just talked about had 200,000 patients. Okay. So if the 100,000 is not unreasonable to look at, and that means you're looking at 38 million, that if you were actually fined, and statistically, very unlikely, 
you know, we talk about, oh, they're doing more than they've ever done before. They still haven't hit in a single year 50. <laughs> they haven't hit 30 fines that they've handed down, even though they do thousands upon thousands of investigations every year. And we're looking at hundreds and hundreds of breaches that occur. Uh, last year, there were over 300 breaches that were over 500 patients that we know were reported. Mm-hmm. Clearly, there should have been at least one more. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, He was like, we can get that cost of 380 down to about nothing. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. But uh, 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 when you look at those numbers and you say, well, okay, so it's very statistically unlikely that you're going to get a fine, but you're going to spend a ton of resources dealing with the problem. Mm Mm-hmm. Unless they decide you have, I mean, if you're just not trying, that's when you get fined now, you know? So everybody worries about those fines, and I've gotten to the point of telling them, look, here's, here's what it is, but it's statistically very unlikely. So that $380, and that's a global number, by the way, not just a narrowed down to the U.S., so it would probably be even higher if you're narrowing it down to the U.S., mm-hmm. but no. No. Mm. And I did think it was interesting that the next closest industry is financials. Nice. And in 2017, theirs had jumped too. Theirs went up as well. Not and 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 where (laughs) healthcare, you know, it it jumped a tish. Financials jumped twenty three dollars, which is they made it up to two hundred forty five dollars. Okay. Okay, long way from three hundred and eighty dollars. Mm-hmm. But you know, they're still talking about. I haven't heard anything in a while, but you know, they were talking about the financial sector having something that's HIPAA like. Yeah, you know, there's more talk about that. Yeah. Yep. So that'd be interesting when it comes down, and you'll be the first to know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll be talking about it if they do. Yeah. But you know, it's it's not just you know financials. It's a lot of these others. And the problem is, I mean, if you look at across all industries, there was actually a reduction in the cost per record across all industries. Went from 158 to 141. Hmm. So if the average is 141 across all industries, and that's dropped significantly, yet healthcare is up to 380. I mean, you can see where you're, it's not about when you look worldwide, there's not tons of fines and penalties. It's not about those things. It's about the cost of covering and and recovering and the amount of data that's lost and the investigation, your own investigation, not one that somebody else is doing. And, uh, you know, having all of the different specialists evaluating what's going on. So... It, it it did point out that across all the different industries, that if the data breach involved a malicious insider or a criminal attack of some sort, then it is the most expensive. Mm. So basically, Copilot <laughs> had a mal- either a malicious insider or criminal attack scenario, a blend of the two. So they're going to find it quite expensive in the end, but. Yeah. Yeah, they've got a lot of legal fees and all of that kind of stuff. Mm. So they did uh, some research and they evaluated a litany of things to see what would increase the cost and what would decrease the cost and uh, uh, per record. So the good news is some of the things that would help you are things that you should be doing under HIPAA, but... The things that increase it are generally the things that are happening to everybody anyway. And uh, the complexity of the IT security architecture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we talk about, you know, how much people, you've got to have this security and you need layers and layers. But, you know, just like any other good thing, there's, you know, there's such a thing as too much of a good thing. (laughs) Yeah, and this is is one of those areas that I really truly believe that making your IT environment too complex means that it's too hard to protect. <laughs> yeah, you can't manage it and you don't know what all's happening. Yeah, it's just, and 
you know, I see this a lot, especially when I'm taking over new clients where it, it looks like you, your client has like 10 workstations and it looks like somebody from some huge corporation came in and said, mm-hmm. these are the things you need to protect your environment. And they have these, you know, big, huge systems in place that nobody manages and nobody even understands that the security protocols and subscriptions went out two, three years ago and nobody's paying for those things anymore. Right. Um, and, and it's just, they, they can't even protect it. And it's it's crazy. So I'm definitely a proponent that coming in and making things, uh, you know, simplified. And simplified doesn't mean easy as far as, yeah, we'll just throw it out there and it'll just work for you. It just makes mm-hmm. it, it makes it easier to manage but it's still not going to, you know, it's not a fire and forget type thing. You still have to to look at the logs and make sure things are happening and all that. But I'm definitely a proponent of making things simple to to manage and and look at and make sure that you can see the information clearly. You need the KISS method, don't you? I do need it. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid. So, <laughs> uh, but they did make a point of saying, you know, too much complexity makes things worse. Mm -hmm. So, but we are uh, saying, you know, there's a certain amount you need to do, but when you have four or five people that got their fingers in the pie, you know, then they're throwing in other ingredients, it becomes a nasty mess. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) And the next uh, item that they mentioned, uh, I don't think that they meant to go as far as Copilot did, uh, because it's... (laughs) (laughs) It's saying the rush to notify victims without understanding the scope or, you know, that it will significantly increase your uh, cost of the breach. It also said compliance failures. And I really want to get, I haven't had a chance to go read in detail exactly what this means, but the engagement of consultants, because it does talk about how you need them, but then it also says engaging them increases the breach cost so i'm clear it's not me it's probably those i mean you think about it it's probably like lawyers and and whatnot where when you go in and it's an emergency situation (laughs) and you're like i need you and i need you right now drop everything else you're doing um sure i'll do that but please know (laughs) my cost will reflect (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah your lack yeah. of planning <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> if i'm on your list you know that's different i've committed uh but yeah I, but it, it, really and truly though the big things the rush to notify i'm not advocating drop everything and start notifying patients in five days there's a reason they give you 60 days is to have some time to figure it out but they also don't want it to be open-ended Mm-hmm. which apparently Copilot thought it was. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's a balance to everything, and that's, you know, more of it here, a balance. Well, let's be balanced. Hey, <laughs> on a balance beam. The increased cost about uh, expenditures to resolve lawsuits. We just had the announcement about the Anthem resolution, their, their uh, civil lawsuit what was the total? One hundred fifteen million dollars, something like that. Mm-hmm. That Anthem just settled their breach lawsuits. Cha ching. Yeah. Let's see, eighty million people. I'm not thinking <laughs> that they get a million each. You know, you know, most of that goes to the lawyers when you do those. But still, that is one hundred fifteen million dollars uh, class action lawsuit or civil lawsuit. So. You can see that clearly that adds to the cost of the data breach, and that has nothing to do with compliance or any of those other things. But compliance failures, so if you have a breach and you are not following your compliance requirements, it does add to it, such as what Copilot is probably going to find out. (laughs) (laughs) It increased the cost by $11 a record. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's a substantial increase. Mm-hmm. And then having a third party involved increased it by $17. So clearly $28 increase just in the co-pilot situation between those two things. So keep your party small. <laughs> 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 it's just me and you. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> But they did give us plenty of ways that you would reduce the cost. 
Okay. So, you know, that $380, we want to drive that number down. All right. Clearly. So we want to focus on the things that we could do to reduce that number. I'm sure there's some proactive the, stuff in here. Yeah, really. The <laughs> faster that you identify and contain the breach, the lower your cost will be because it's less damage. Mm-hmm. So it says um, that they're mean because, you know, that's a statistical number. It's not an average. It's a mean. It's the middle. The middle time it took is 191 days to find the breach. Wow. So if that is what it takes to find the breach, uh, you, you know, you could be in the middle of that 191 days right now. Mm-hmm. And then once you find it, it takes 66 days is the mean number to mitigate the breach and resolve everything. So this is where we talk about telling people, look, you've got to stay on top of things so that you can recognize when something's happening and that, you know, you review the logs and pay attention and have uh, your employees be security aware and notice things. Because even if they found it early, it's still 66 days to get out of the mess. So what I take from that is, from an IT perspective, uh, no, it will not be fixed today. (laughs) 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 You have this done yet? I told you like two hours ago. No, (laughs) this is a big complex problem. (laughs) Yeah, once you have a problem, it is not something that goes away quickly. (laughs) You know, if the middle days is 66, you know, even if you did it in half the normal time, you're talking about still over a month. Yeah. So people need to understand those numbers. They matter a lot. So when you call and you go, I think we had a breach. Can you look at it on Friday when we close early? <laughs> <laughs> Don't bother us right now. <laughs> yeah, sure. We'll have it done in the jiffy. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, and the thing is, is people actually say that kind of stuff. <laughs> and then the next thing that they said, you know, that really made a difference, because one of the costs is losing customers. Mm-hmm. So you want to make sure you lose less customers. And another piece of the report was it is dramatically more expensive in the United States when you lose customers. Mm -hmm. Because it's like the bar chart. (laughs) You might as well have them on two different pages. Because it's like all really short little costs for every other country. But in the United States, it costs a ton of money because of the number of customers that you can lose. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about that significant difference. 50% of consumers say if they're worried about their security, they'll go find another provider. Uh, and there's you know a wide variety of studies. I think the lowest number I've ever seen is 30. So imagine 30% of your patients leave. Whew. Boom. Not only the number of patients and, and stuff like that, but is, there's so many more providers out there too that mm-hmm. <laughs> they'll be more than happy to snatch up your, oh, your accounts. Yeah. But um, There's plenty of People that have breaches that are now experiencing that, you know, exodus of patients over what has occurred. Yeah, I think as a society, we don't have we don't have that mindset that we have to stick with somebody or some solution or service. I mean, you know, used to you kind of stuck with people when you found somebody all your life. Yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, you yeah. don't. Well, and, and, you know, the other thing is, is that in some places, you don't have a lot of choices in small towns. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. <laughs> but... One of the things I had a conversation recently with uh, a client had asked, you know, do we have to provide identity theft protection? Because there doesn't appear to be. It's one of those where, you know, we're doing the abundance of caution letter that says, you know, there, there's no reason for us to believe there's a problem. However, in the abundance of caution, we're letting you know. And it really doesn't seem like it's anything anybody would have a problem with. And they're asking, okay, so do we have to do the uh, identity protection? And I told them, you know, statistically, when people ask me, I was in a breach, I got the letter, what can I do? You know, basically, there's not a lot. (laughs) You're sitting around waiting for it. Yeah, I mean, we talked before, too, though, that if somebody's going to steal the data, they'll just wait a year or two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it make sure the you know identity protection stuff is done expired, and then mm-hmm. they'll use it. Yeah. So when it when it comes right down to it, although I, d- I did meet a, a doctor who told me his daughter 
was in, we'll just say, one of the major breaches in the North Georgia area last year involving a <laughs> hacker. <laughs> like and, the Dark Overlord, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who's who's now been hitting some other places, by the by? Some more healthcare entities been hit by the TDO. And Netflix talked about how they paid, or Larson Production, who produces Orange is the New Black, paid $50,000 to keep their stuff from being released, and they still released it. So they're clearly, <laughs> that whole thing where they started by saying we're well, honest I, I thought they were good guys. They lied. <laughs> they lied, Blatch. Man. So, but anyway, this doctor's daughter who was in the breach said that there's been six different attempts to steal her identity. Oh, wow. Yeah, since it occurred. Now, and I don't know if she was involved in multiple ones, and that's just, a, you know, is a brief conversation. But the bottom line is, what I advise this client is to say, look, first of all, not every person is going to sign up for it. And if they already have it, you're not going to sign up for it again. Mm -hmm. And so many people have <laughs> been on these lists. Number one. Number two is, you know, we talked before about how hard it is to get coverage for children. So, you know, if you've got kids in there, may or may not be able to get it. So you've got to deal with that. But the bottom line is, it is primarily a PR move. And everybody can tell you the people that decided not to do it and cut a video and put it on their website <laughs> saying it would put us out of business if we had identity protection for all of these people. That alone may put them out of business because they didn't do it. Mm-hmm. You know, and not the fact that most people, you know, they they would they calculated it as if every single person is going to want, you know, two years of coverage or whatever, and this is what it's going to cost us. And that actually, according to this study, is one of the best ways you are most successful in reducing the loss of customers if you provide this. That's the number one way to stop what they call churn. You know, you're you're losing it. Mm -hmm. So they said that it was very, if you had a senior individual that was involved in reassuring your patients and you offered this, then you were going to be most successful in reducing the loss. Hmm. Good and to yeah, I know. So I thought that was cool. And of course, take less time to find it and fix it because we <laughs> talked about, the, you know, 191 days, 66 days. So if you can do that, uh, cyber and breach insurance. Mm -hmm. that, that helps manage the cost anyway. Yeah, and we've had a cyber insurance person on before. Yeah, I know. We may, we may have John back. Yeah. Talk about more response time. But the business continuity plans, having uh, one in place, yes. saves money. Saves money. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, tell saves people it's an money. investment. They don't listen. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, saves you money. I like this line, recruitment and retention of knowledgeable personnel. Saves money. Hmm. Yeah. When Very when good. bad things go wrong, having somebody without a clue is not going to be helpful. <laughs> they don't have a plan. They don't have a clue because we hired the cheapest guy right out of high school. <laughs> but he knows about computers. <laughs> but a business continuity plan, and we we tried to touch on this really well. And I, you know, we really need to talk more about what's in a business continuity plan. Mm -hmm. But that sixty six days. That's when you're running your business continuity plan. Right. You're keeping the business running while the crisis is occurring. And uh, let's see, incident response team reduces the cost per record by $19. Wow. $19. That's, That's a worthwhile, change. yeah. Yeah. So saves money to have an incident response team. It saves money to recruit and retain knowledgeable people. It saves money to have a business continuity plan. And it also saves $16 per record for extensive use of encryption. <laughs> That's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that and you say, well, it's $19. Yeah, it's $19 times 100000 So if you do all these things, then if you have a breach, then OCR may actually give you money. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, they just going to strike you a check. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of different ways, but if you're going to focus on the top three ways to get that $380 down, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You're going to do an incident response team. You're going to do encryption. And you're going to train your employees. And if you do those things, so you get, let me hear, it's on the chart. If those top three things to reduce the overall participation or the cost per record. Mm-hmm. So it's $19.30. And I go, get ready, David, do your math. $19.30. <laughs> $16.10 and $12.50. So that's 90 cents. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, what is it? 40 something? I don't know. But that's a substantial number. Yeah. It's free money. It's free money. It's not free money, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, you're just wrong in so many ways. <laughs> uh, but it's, you know, I mean, take that $380 and you do those three things, you know, times You can have a third party, 000. yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you don't want to have a third party, that's for sure. And compliance failure is adding $11, so better be trying to do your compliance to keep from adding some of that back in. But you definitely want to focus on those top three things. Mm -hmm. And I think that we've mentioned all of those three things before, the importance of having an incident response plan for everything, Mm -hmm. not just the drive failure. We got a backup. You know, when when we say, what's your business continuity disaster recovery plan? We got a backup. Yeah. (laughs) What you going to do with that backup? When was the last time you tested that backup? Yeah. So there's a lot of questions. Yeah. So I had a one recently where they said they had a business continuity plan, and so I said, "Well, how much you how much are you paying for it?" Because that usually can give an indication of what they're getting. And uh, they said, "We're paying fifty dollars a month." Yeah, I said, "No." <laughs> mm-hmm. you what are a, they doing? You don't have a business continuity plan, so let let's talk about this. How much time did they tell you it would take for you to recover? Or should something happen? Uh, and they said somewhere between one. Week to ten days. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, all right. All right. So, yeah. so you can function. Yeah, your business can survive you being shut down com- for a complete week to ten days. She's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 This is math. Yeah. So you have a back- <laughs> math is in everything. Yeah, you have a backup, but you don't have a business continuity plan. Very different. And we talked about Very that different. before. Yes. Yeah. So when you have a breach, here are the things that we've learned. Mm -hmm. There's a few things that are different between a business associate and a covered entity because the business associates often will say, oh, well, we don't have to do notification, so we don't need to have a response team. We don't need to. No. (laughs) Stop. (laughs) It's not true. You have to remember the ultimate responsibility is with the covered entity. Yes. But they're your customer. And they are the ones that are going to have to deal with the reputation and all these other issues. And you don't want them to be in the news because you talk about churn. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, oy vey. <laughs> so, <laughs> but the key piece to remember is, yes, the covered entity is ultimately responsible. But if you're a business associate, you should know and have a plan what you're going to do. How are you going to notify your people? Who's going to handle the PR? Because you can have tons of covered entities that need to be notified Mm -hmm. and or business associates. And you certainly don't want them to learn about it in the news or from somebody else. Mm -hmm. No. And you can go to them and say, look, here's the information we've gathered. This is the assessment we've done. And we wanted to let you know about it because they would love that. They want to not just have you dump a big in their lap uh, they <laughs> want you to give them information I can't believe you said that <laughs> okay. okay we better record that <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh the FCC your house is going to light up uh-huh. the card <laughs> FCC but if you're a covered entity you need to know what you're going to do have a plan have an incident response plan have a plan to identify your patients while the forensics is taking place. Who are you going to need to notify? How can you notify them? Where is a list of uh, how's my way that I can get out of my database, assuming I have access to it? How can I get a list of patients, every single patient, 
and their address and potentially phone numbers. Mm -hmm. And the best thing to do when it gets down to do I notify or do I not, and I've been in on these conversations where there's five people on the phone and everybody's arguing about whether or not you notify, and I was like, how about we just take the questions that we have to answer for low pro co? It's in the law. (laughs) Low probability of compromise. Question number one. Do we feel like blah, 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 blah? Well, (laughs) can we say this? And then you get a lot of quiet. And then you do question number two. And by the time you get to question number four, everybody knows where you stand. Mm -hmm. So just nip all of that crazy stuff and just pull out your plan. And your plan should involve answering the questions you're required to answer, period. Because that solves the problem every time. Just pull it out and answer the questions. And when you do, you go through the exceptions and you go through the low probability of compromise, you'll know your answer. There's no more arguing. There's no more messing around. It makes the decision easier. And then know all of these things of how you can reduce the cost of what's occurred. Nice. You may hit us so easy. Oh, stop <laughs> it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ah, thank you. You Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your insightfulness today. (laughs) Uh, We want to thank everybody for listening to our podcast today and uh, putting up with Donna. And uh, (laughs) You're you're cruising, brother. You're cruising. I I know. I got to pick. Got to pick and poke while I can. (laughs) (laughs) So just remember to review us on iTunes. Guess what, guys? We haven't had a single iTunes review this year. What is happening (laughs) <laughs> to our listeners, the, the, we're not paying attention. The listeners, <laughs> the listenership is going crazy. We have tons more listeners, but nobody's putting iTunes reviews out there. So maybe nobody's using iTunes or anymore. Stitcher reviews, yeah. Stitcher reviews, do that. Either one. Yeah. My theory is that nobody uses iTunes anymore. Uh, okay. We're all jumping to Google. So, okay. um, <laughs> our statistics don't show us that, but okay. They're, they're using a, a emulator. Android boy. They're using the, uh, an emulator on their Android phone. Yeah. So. Stitcher, Stitcher lets you work no matter what kind of phone you have. Yep. And it lets us do, you can do reviews on there. So let's use Stitcher. Yeah. So actually, there's a link at the bottom of our website, helpmewithhippa.com. You can uh, see our Stitcher link at the bottom of every page. And you can uh, go there and do that. Share us out on social media. We uh, have some of you who do that faithfully, and we appreciate it. Uh, if you have a question and you would like for us to feature that on a podcast, then uh, leave that and we'll review it. And if we like it, we'll use it. And if we don't, we'll just throw it in the trash. <laughs> so, so remember for Donna and myself that HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims. The show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.